focuses on securing investment dollars at Sydney Conference. Finance Minister gives the numbers on DSIP payments. And cost of services report launched. This is National MTV News with Mary Bartulo. Good evening and welcome to the news. Heads of mining and mineral companies, decision makers and potential investors will converge on Sydney's Hilton Hotel for the 13th Mining and Petroleum Investment Conference starting tomorrow. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill will be officiating at the conference and is positive about discussions on PNG's mining status and future. He feels PNG could benefit greatly from further exploits into its resource sector. This despite global projections that PNG's mineral sector will reach unprecedented levels over the next three to five years. MTV will be on the ground to report on all that unfolds over the next three days in what the PM says will see some major announcements for the sector. The LNG, PNG LNG project. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill sees this year's conference as one of the very few times that PNG has to showcase itself to solidify its economic future. Mining conference that is going to be held in Sydney is an important occasion for Papua New Guinea to showcase our opportunity to encourage investors who are going to come and invest in the mining and petroleum sector. It is a regular event and most, nearly all of the country's current mining and petroleum projects have been spawned at this event. Uh, we uh, have been doing this for quite some time now, but I believe that uh, Papua New Guinea is a, uh, a, a country where the opportunities to have stable investment environment for investors to come in is, is there. We need to showcase this, that to our investors. It's a meet that shows PNG decision makers who is interested in doing business in the country and just how much in investment keener their conviction is. And we believe very strongly that uh, there are a lot of investment dollars out there which can come into Papua New Guinea, especially in that industry. So we can have more exploration, more development of existing mines and, and so forth. So Papua New Guinea's uh, opportunity is there for us to showcase these uh, this, uh, uh, events that are there available for us. Despite a larger funding focus on tourism and agriculture as the country's lead renewable sectors, the push for more investment in the mining and mineral sector could see some major announcements expected at this year's conference. Neville Choi. National MTV News. Finance Minister James Marape has called on the opposition team to check the district treasury before making frail statements in regard to the DSIP funds. Minister Marape says like any other priority sectors for development, there is no discrimination of district service improvement program funds to all members of parliament. In an interview with the finance minister, Mr. Marape said the 2013 DSIP funds has been dispersed successfully to all districts, except three districts for members in the government team. Mr. Marape said the opposition has always placed him in the spotlight regarding these funds. So being in, in the opposition, we do not have funding that comes in a timely manner, and we do not have adequate funding in terms of pooling our resources. However, the finance minister said the Bulolo MP has been given six million and not three million, as stated by Mr. Basil in a media conference recently. Uh, the good member for Bulolo cannot continue to uh, go into the media trying to gain uh, public sympathy. Mr. Marapes said government's policy to establish DSIP funds is to help districts bring services to the people at the lowest level of government. It's not discrimination. On record, as I said, 2013, 100% of DSIP meant for uh, most districts have gone up. Meanwhile, Mr. Marapes said, based on cash flow, districts with outstanding amounts will be paid accordingly. Jack Lopave, Jr., National MTV News. With the cost of delivering basic services increasing gradually, Treasury Minister Patrick Pruaich says cost of services report needs to be updated periodically. Minister Pruaich said this is to ensure the government has accurate statistics so services can be channeled down to district levels. The Treasury Minister made these remarks at the launching of the cost of services report in Port Moresby recently. 
Papua New Guinea's economic boom has been highly praised, but has left the country to struggle in delivering services to the people. High freight costs have hampered the cost of services both at the national and provincial level. Speaking at the launch of the 2011 Cost of Services report, Treasury Minister Patrick Pruitt says the study establishes the level of fiscal needs that exist at the sub-national level on province basis. It is not an easy task to deliver even the most basic service to our people due to the house and underdeveloped uh, geographical terrain. Minister Pruitt says it's not just the collection of data but the providing of policy advice to the level of funding to individual provinces and local levels. Many forms and patterns. Ella Beechcraft Market is one of the avenues where our traditional belongings are being displayed in the nation's capital. It is a monthly event and one that attracts both local and international tourists. The Ella Beechcraft Market is on at the end of every month. It has gained popularity over the years with some of the nicely crafted artifacts, drawings and even floriculture on display. As Port Mosby Plain hosts to major upcoming events including the 2015 Pacific Games and the 2018 Apex Summit, visitors visiting the country will be increased and they would not go back empty-handed. At least one antique or souvenir will be a reminder of Papua New Guinea and these sellers sitting here would definitely make sure to play their part. You come to Hablo Mibla, you got Kina now, you got big and you man through now. You know man suppose you no got big na Kina. No got man by giving respect to you na. Only na pay my attention to you. So Kina and me also playing big play role belonging inside. Marity Mary, compensation, everything. Long Hablo Mibla, long this is like uh, Southern Highlands. Some play Kina sell and me got big name Kina sell. Uh, store this one, uh, traditional oil. They store this one for a long, longer times, and they normally use this one for decorations, for a sensei group, the rub on their backs, on the faces, on the skin of a man, especially on a woman. PNG is a culture-oriented, like any other Melanesian societies, who are proud to share their beliefs and the biodiversity. On display is something unique and can be found in Papua New Guinea. It gives a sense of pride, identity, and belonging. Tere Alex, National MTV News. That ends our new segment. Strukai Sports is next. I'll bring you the details after the break. Stay with us. Strukai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. Four provinces have confirmed to bring the 2015 Pacific Games to their people. West Sipik, Oro, Gulf and Western provinces have signed up to participate in the Live Site Program, Youth Leadership Program, Provincial Cultural Group and the Games Relay. Games Organising Committee CEO Peter Stewart has welcomed the four provinces' support and said the Games is not just a sporting event but also a celebration of culture, friendship and unity. Each province will have access to watching the games live through the live side program, while four male and female youths will be sent to Port Mosby to take part in the leadership program. Each province will also have a cultural group performing during the games. The ending of the 6th BSP PNG Games in Leh has drawn a huge benchmark for the next games which will be held in Kimbe, West New Britain province. Host Governor Kelly Naro was overwhelmed with the Games in Leh and says the past two weeks have been hectic for athletes, organizers and officials. Governor Naro hailed the Games as a success by the Morabe people. Meanwhile, concerns of sporting facilities for the 7th PNG Games keeps mounting on host province in Kimbe. However, neighboring province East New Britain has thrown its support behind West New Britain to host the next PNG Games. And that ends our Trukai Sports segment. Up next, I'll bring you the weather details. Stay tuned. Trukai Sports. <laughs> Trukai Sports.
taking a look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region. All centers fine. To the Mombasa region, lay mostly fine with a maximum temperature of 31 degrees. Evening showers for a while, maximum of 32. Medang, you can expect evening showers with a top temperature of 32. We back, you can expect showers with a top temperature of 32 as well. And the same for Vanimo, you can expect evening showers there. To the New Guinea Islands, Lorangao, you can expect showers with a top temperature of 32. A top temperature of 32 as well for Kaveng, there you can expect showers and thunderstorms. For Kokopo and Rabaul, you can expect showers, showers in Kimbe and showers also in Buka. And to the Highlands region, Mendi and Wabeg, mostly low cloud. Goroka and Kundiawa, brief showers, then morning fog. And Mount Hagen, mostly fine. Before we go, recapping our headlines, Prime Minister Peter O'Neill says mining conference to open up more prospects for PNG. Finance Minister James Marape outlines the dispersing of DSIP funds and 2011 cost of service report launched in Port Moresby. And that has been the news, sports and weather for Sunday, November the 30th from the news team. Pleasant viewing. Good night.